Welcome to this new presentation of uh, fundamental machine learning concepts, uh, namely overfitting and underfitting. So those concepts are really important to understand when and why a model can generalize well or not on uh, unseen data. So let's start with an example. So consider those two prediction models, the blue uh, lines. On the left hand side, uh, you see this is a straight lines that go through a cloud of data points. So the, the black data points here uh, map one input x uh, to a target y. So we want to predict the y value from the x value. And we have access only to those uh, black data points as a training set. So here, if we fit a linear model, we find this uh, linear regression line uh, with a negative slope. And uh, basically that detects the, the general trend of uh, this uh, cloud of data points. On the right hand side, on the other hand, you see that we fit a, a polynomial uh, with a large number of degrees, a large degree polynomial. And, and this polynomial can go through all the individual black data points of the training set. So basically this polynomial, the blue, uh, the blue prediction function here, uh, can uh, exactly predict the value of the black data point without any error, basically. For each value x, it will find the exact value of y for the observed data point on the training set. So intuitively, which uh, prediction function uh, do you prefer? The straight line or this uh, large degree polynomial? Intuitively, most people would say that they prefer this straight line. So it's a bit counterintuitive because this one does not make any prediction error on the training set. And this one does make prediction errors on the training set because it, 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 there is a, a difference between the, the, the predicted value in blue and the, and the location of the observed uh, y variables for, for those uh, location in x. So how do we judge actually that this is better than this? Uh, the answer uh, comes from using new data points. So here we use, we display as orange data points uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the values of observations uh, that we kept for the test set. Um, so th those are points that come from the same generative process as the training set, uh, but they were held back just for evaluating the quality of the model. And so here you see that the, the model is making the same kind of errors on both the training and uh, test data point, where here this polynomial model does make errors on the orange data point, while it does not make any error on the black training point. And furthermore, you see that it's, it tends to make predictions that are outside of the range of possible values for the orange data point. So intuitively, we think that this is a problem. This behavior is a problem. Uh, let's consider now a, a slightly more complex problem. So we have a different uh, data distribution for both the input and the output, uh, for both the train and the test set. So this time the output variable is related to the input variable using this kind of non-linear curvy shape uh, uh, structure. Okay. Um, so if we fit the linear model here, we still find a negative slope straight line. And here the, the polynomial is still able to go through all the black data points. So which one is the best here in this case? It's slightly harder to tell because here we see that the, the straight line here might not be a good choice because it, it cannot really capture the, the, the global structure here. While this one maybe does capture the global structure, but at the same time, it still makes uh, extreme predictions here. So that might still be a problem. So it's really hard to tell whether uh, one is better than the other here. So to, to understand a bit deeper uh, what is happening here, let's consider the, the, the generative process that we use to, to generate this data, point, this data set. So uh, it's a random process where first we, we take a value of x at random. So on, on the y-axis, we pick up a, a location of x, for instance, here. Then we transform x using this ground truth 
polynomial. It's a ninth degree polynomial, so very uh, large degree polynomial. And we transform x to this location here. And then we add some noise to get the output y. So the noise is just a, a, a variation around this location here. And so here we get the, the observed value of y. So this is how the data was generated. But however, in practice, we do not know this uh, underlying generative process. We just have access to the data, pro the, the, the data point of the training set, or just those 50 black data points. And then we want to fit a prediction model on this training set to make hopefully good prediction on future data for the test set. So let's uh, fit uh, different uh, models on, on this data. The first one is the, the linear model. It's a degree one polynomial. Uh, a linear model is a degree one polynomial. Degree zero would be a constant prediction, horizontal line. Degree one, we have a slope, a degree of freedom. And then we can add more degrees of freedom. For instance, a degree two polynomial uh, is a quadratic function, basically. Uh, and this one has more flexibility and can capture some of the uh, global structure of the training set. We can increase the, the degree of the polynomial even further. And we see that now we can find interesting uh, change in, in, in the slope at, at, on the right hand side. And if we increase further to degree 9 polynomial, something very interesting happens. At this point, we see that we have this kind of wide variations uh, of the prediction that does not really reflect the, the, the original structure of the data generative process. Recall that the ge data generative process is the dashed line here. So ideally, we would like to find a model that would match approximately the dash dashed line. And here you see that uh, degree two or degree five polynomial are kind of closely matching the, the dashed line, whereas the degree nine polynomial is really far away, and the degree one polynomial uh, does not really find the structure, it's too constrained. Uh, so how do we qualify those kind of prediction errors? Uh, the, the problem with the degree nine polynomial is that this is a model that is too complex for the limited, uh, the limited amount of training data that we have access to. Uh, so this is the problem of overfitting. We say that the degree nine polynomial uh, is overfit for this specific training set. Uh, and it cannot really recover the, the ground truth because uh, this flexibility in the model uh, capture the noise of the data and the limited amount of data point that we have does not make it possible to tell whether uh, some variation are, no are noise or interesting structure. And the, the fact that we have too much flexibility in the model is actually a problem. So to summarize, overfitting happens when we have not enough data points and we have too much noise in, uh, in the relationship between uh, Y and X. On the opposite side, we also have the underfitting problem, which happens when the model is too simple and cannot really capture the global structure of uh, the variation of uh, y given x. Uh, here, this is the case for the linear line that cannot really capture the nonlinear structure of the, the, the data set. Uh, yet, it's interesting because those models, the underfitting model, do not really suffer from the, the noise because they are too constrained to be able to memorize the noise. So there is uh, a trade-off here. And so typically underfitting happens when you have plenty of data and a low noise level, and you chose a model that is too constrained for this, this uh, complex data set, complex but deterministic data set. So we see that we have a trade-off uh, between uh, overfitting and underfitting. And uh, to summarize, remember that overfitting happens when the model are too complex and they explain too well the data that they have seen as part of the training set, including the noise, and therefore they do not generalize well. Um, models that are too simple uh, for a given data set underfit because uh, they are too limited by their, uh, the expressivity of their model class or their model parameters. And uh, therefore, uh, they also make uh, prediction errors, but they do not suffer too much from noise.
So how to find the right balance? Uh, this is the question, the main question of, of machine learning, and we will see uh, elements of answers in, in the next presentation. Thank you.